Well, the jackboot killer of many American liberties has announced she's sayonara. Pay complete. She's in a scurry off to California to the sinking wreckage of their educational system out there under their commie takeover. Big sis, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe she just have to wear a Hannibal Lecter mask, not, not a muzzle, so that she doesn't try to chew up everybody's liberties. I don't know. Hey, listen, I read this book. It's got a nice little acknowledgement to yours truly. Stroke of the ego. No, I'm just joking. I mean, there is an acknowledgement. But, uh, you know, Obama Deception 2, I'm going to give these guys credit as a blueprint, as a model of true investigative journalism and people that deserve the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, the Project Veritas founder and head, James O'Keefe, has written Breakthrough, Our Guerrilla War to Expose Fraud and Save Democracy. And it is a page turner, folks. I read this in two nights, and I don't have a lot of time to be reading at night because I'm busy mainly reading news. Uh, you go through it, and it's just got, you know, how they did it, what they did, how to be an investigative journalist. Everybody asks me, how do I do this? How do I do that? These guys know what they're doing. And just think of all, brought down Akron, billions of dollars of taxpayer money a year, a mafia organization. Brought them down, brought down so much more, got arrested, got set up, still beat it by the grace of God. Uh, I, I mean, this if people actually did what is in this book, we're going to talk more about the book in a moment. I want to get a little bit into the uh, latest on the case, and we're going to be following it all weekend and next week with the verdict and, and then the calls for rioting and all the rest of it. But uh, what people are saying about the book, uh, upstart James O'Keefe has dealt a major blow to the establishment. George Stephanopoulos. <laughs> Go watch the video. It's enlightening. It's uh, enraging. Governor Chris Christie, it just goes on and on. President Obama uh, responds to it. Just It goes Dennis Miller, John Stewart, Andrew Breitbart. And guys, you could do this too. People always call me. I got an idea for you to do this or that. I'm like, you do it. I'm telling you, folks, you do it. And the book is available at InfoWarsStore.com and Bookstores everywhere, but get it at InfoWarsStore.com so we get a little bit of support as well. Uh, James, I've really got to salute you. Not only are you a first-class, should-be Pulitzer Prize winner, Edward R. Murrow winner, of course you're not, said you get thrown in jail cells, but, I mean, you are the model, you and your organization, uh, of what's going to save this country, and good job putting this, uh, this, this, this master work out. I pray now that everybody get the book, and, and, and grandparents out there, get it and give it to your to your college student grandkids. So, because they're not going to ever have a career or job in this country now. Maybe they can go out and try to save the country with it being a citizen journalist. Uh, Mr. O'Keefe, uh, how's the book doing? I hear it's selling pretty well. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, the Breakthrough is a New York Times bestseller. Uh, it's gotten all positive reviews. And like you said, it was sort of a David versus Goliath struggle, asymmetrical warfare we have to fight to subvert a complacent media and a corrupt government. I have been targeted in every way you could possibly imagine, and I've survived, from prosecutions to indictments to potential indictments to the Department of Justice trying to criminalize the First Amendment. Uh, everything in this book is more like a thriller than it is an actual political book, but it's all true. And uh, it's a fascinating story, and it's a hopeful story, because, you know, like you said, if you just don't give up, you just keep going, keep fighting, uh, you can actually break through. Well, Jim Garrison said that. They said, why are you still alive? And he said, because I'm in the spotlight. And when they persecute me and lie about me and try to set me up, it gives me even more energy to fight them. And it's actually exciting. It's not scary. Is that the experience you've had? Well, I think you're right. I think if you're, if you're in the spotlight, if you're in the public realm, it's less likely they're going to do something to you. Um, and we have, a, we have sort of, they run out of arrows in their quiver, so to speak. Um, but, I mean, this book takes you in the trenches. It shows you that the Department of Justice, will, instead of looking, you know, instead of working in Massachusetts, uh, they were trying to track me down, the FBI. Uh, uh, they, this, a federal judge deleted evidence. Um, I, I have had defamation lawsuits settled. I've used the proceeds of those defamation lawsuits to fund more investigations. It's really incredible what you can accomplish if you just focus on the truth and we, we use we call it veritas veritas latin for truth cinema verite exposing things for what they really are and there's really no way around it but i think at this point the good news is that you know, we've gotten to such a, a, a position of prominence in the, in the public spotlight that i don't think they'll be able to shut us down now you are incredible and, and, and again you've gone through the storm i'm sure there'll be more that come but as you said 
uh, in a way, you and others, we're starting to break them. They want to demoralize us. We're demoralizing them with the truth. And they're, they're beginning to dawn on them as their viewers collapse, as their poll numbers collapse, that, that this is only the beginning. No amount of two billion bullets or brainwashing or race war is going to help them. Liberty is rising. And in that fist, smashing the tyrant, Hydra's in the head, a big part of that fist is James O'Keefe, founder of Project Veritas. Breakthrough, available at InfoWarsStore.com. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. James O'Keefe, uh, somebody fighting for all of us, has put out the amazing book that, that is a thriller, and it's non-fiction, ladies and gentlemen, and for me is really a how-to book to be a real investigative journalist and how to change history. Because the globalists and their forces are so corrupt, if you just point out what they're doing is wrong when they're on MSNBC in promo saying, your children don't belong to you, they belong to the state. Or... You know, when they're on TV saying, we now have an app out to report all gun owners and put them in a database for the public. And then people get sued over that, like when newspapers publish, uh, you know, where gun owners live. I mean, it's time to stop groveling to these people. You pick a target politically, do the right thing, stand up for yourself. The evil will collapse. Thomas Jefferson said all that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men and women do nothing. The book, Breakthrough, Our Guerrilla War to Expose Fraud and Save Democracy, James O'Keefe. It is an absolute tour de force, ladies and gentlemen. And you need to get it at InfoWarsStore.com. And you need to give it to friends and family. And you need to let them know that this fight is going on. Because anytime I see people start standing up and start questioning, even if it's your city council with local stuff going on, you start getting big results. And at first they act all powerful and all arrogant. But after a couple years, if you just start once a month going out, videotaping something, doing something, you will wreck them. That's why they laugh and act arrogant. They don't laugh later. They squeal, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, I mean, I'm describing what I've been through. You've seen what James O'Keefe has done. Really, I've told my reporters. That's why I hired reporters. I said, do stuff like Veritas. Let, let, you know, let's start. Uh, we already do some of this, but I said, let's get really aggressive. And again, you don't have to get to this uh, level of like, you know, NFL dream team, uh, you know, NFL uh, Super Bowl level of this right away. In fact, you probably never will. Maybe you don't want to. That's when it gets dangerous. The little stuff is easy and not dangerous. So get the book, InfoWarsStore.com. Talk about some of the stories in the book. Talk about, uh, then tie it in currently you know, to what you see the Obamanoids doing, talking about criminal charges against News Corp and Rupert Murdoch in the U.S. Uh, over uh, reporters talking to cops in England? Yeah, Alex, this is, this is sort of the mainstreaming of the criminalization of journalism. People thought I was crazy a couple of years ago when I talked about how the Department of Justice was leaking my emails. People thought I was nuts. In fact, now with the new scandals, everyone believes me. Um, we had reason to believe that the U.S. Attorney's Office in Louisiana was leaking my emails. Now we see Glenn Greenwald, uh, you have David Gregory on NBC News talking about how he's aiding and abetting a source. I mean, they're, they're literally, the establishment people are talking, are calling for the criminalization of news reporting. And while I have been on the front lines, I have, I have been on, on the absolute front lines of this, I had agents come to my house for three years, federal agents harassing my family. I had them almost raid the home of one of my colleagues for exposing voter fraud in the state of New Hampshire, even though our expose showing dead people voting led to the uh, state passing a voter identification law. So we have been on the front lines as citizens, and at, the, and at this turning point in our country, we have to establish the left and the right have to come together on the First Amendment. And I don't see that happening. I see a rift. I see some people being protected. I see the Department of Justice protecting certain journalists and prosecuting other journalists based on the information they expose. And this book, there's so many stories. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. 
but uh, it's all about that that fight that I've had to fight. You know, I want to play a clip here in a few minutes. What did you think of Hastings? And now that they won't release the uh, report of what they did with his body, uh, I've talked to the family. I've talked to his friends. The family's scared to come on air. I've talked to uh, uh, Staff Sergeant Biggs about, he said, I'm going into hiding. They're death threatening me. Biggest story ever. CIA. Uh, they're coming to all our houses. And the FBI lied. Now I've talked to people that went to the funeral. They were visited by the FBI. The FBI lied about visiting them. And then his car blows up. And then where's the so-called big left media? They're making fun of anybody that questions uh, his death. And I mean, it's pretty much open and shut. It was a car bomb from what I've seen. Well, what, what interests me about Hastings, I'm, I'm glad you, you brought him up, is that I was, I was reading a little bit about uh, looking into him because I think towards the end of his life, Michael Hastings had a little bit of an awakening about our media. And he, he gave an interview with, I think it was Chen Unger, um, uh, I don't know where, I saw it on YouTube, and he was saying that he had to leave Newsweek because in Newsweek his hands were tied. He said he, he had to go into the wilderness, as he called it. He had to become independent. He had to branch out and freelance, right, for Rolling Stone, which is a little more of a rag than Newsweek was. And I see it, I see it all over the media. I see reporters, they have to be independent in order to get the truth out. They have to branch out and leave these established papers with big salaries. He was talking about his editors wouldn't let him do what he wanted to do. And I think this is unfortunately where we are. We have to be independent people. We have to take it upon ourselves. To, now, what does that mean? It means that the First Amendment needs to protect the people who become independent. In fact, these established groups, they're not even doing journalism anymore. So it, it's, it's, it's really shocking to see the Justice Department, you know, protecting the guy who bugged McConnell, who committed a felony through, you know, taped him through a wall. He's considered a journalist. Um, you know, Daniel Ellsberg is considered a hero. And all these other people are considered heroes, but now the citizens who actually do the journalism are, are prosecuted. And by the way, next week I'll be releasing a video. I actually confronted the, the corrupt United States attorneys who prosecuted me, and you will not believe what they did in response. They, you, unbelievable footage. It, it's coming next week at Project Veritas. Well, the clip we played a few weeks ago, Hastings said they've declared war on journalists. Uh, they've declared war on liberty, uh, and it's time that the journalists stand together and just release everything this corrupt government's doing. And uh, I think that scared him because he was a leader. And I just can't believe, other than some TV stations in L.A. and San Diego, none of them are saying there's a cover-up This should be investigated. Well, I mean, like I said, I think Hastings was having a little bit of an awakening towards the end of his life. About, I think there's a, there's a, a, a false dichotomy on the, on the left and the right. You know, I think Hastings was kind of seeing that false dichotomy a little bit, that that I think we all need to come together and support the first amendment. Alex, there's stories in this book, Breakthrough, where I, I mean, I, I was researching all types of things the last three years. I, would, I wasn't allowed to travel. The government would not let me travel over a misdemeanor crime I didn't even commit. So I was in the library in New Jersey investigating the, the National Education Association, and the librarian came up to me and said, now, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm a reporter. I'm investigating uh, you know, voter fraud in the Educa Education Association. And she said, why are you doing that? No, no, you can't do that. So I discovered that I'm always behind enemy lines. That's oh, I know. I, I don't call these people liberals. And again, I'm a constitutional libertarian, but obviously uh, Republicans talk more like I like. Sovereignty, family, uh, anti-abortion, pro-life, um, things like that. But of course, then they sell us out because they're part of the same power structure. But the Democrats, even their rank and file, the old, well-meaning liberals now know Democrats are bad and are awake and are more of like a libertarian liberal. But those that are still behind it think they're part of like an authoritarian club. And they'll come over to our reporters in Austin and go, when they were just talking to somebody on the street, you know, a woman in a suit interviewing people, and go, I don't think you're allowed to be on the street interviewing. I'm calling the police. And then the police come. I mean, they call the police on us when we're handing out magazines. And the cops come and go, yeah, you can't do that. It's upsetting people. I think it's censorship. I think there's a distinction. I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. I think there's a distinction, because I've spent many, much, much time thinking about this, because it, it's affected me in a very personal way. There's a difference between criticism and censorship. And what I see is I see, sometimes I, I describe this in, in Breakthrough, liberalism is yielding to fascism. And there is, a, there is a distinct difference between wanting to silence people and shut down information and have a conversation about what that information means. 
in my case, they want to shut me down. They want to censor me. They no, that's what I'm saying is that they're they're authoritarians and they'll laugh at me and say, yeah, I know we're taking over. It's like Democrats now don't care if Obama kills, bombs or even rips them off. It's like they feel like they're part of an evil team. I mean, it's like when you went in all the Akron offices, they're like, you got child sex slaves or whatever? You got underage prostitutes? Bring them on. You know, I mean, it's scary that the rank and... You get my point. I mean, have you picked up on the average Democrat being like a criminal? Well, I mean, I see the Department of Justice is, is like I said, protecting the guy who, who planted a listening device through a wall, which... You know, maybe you argue that's justified. It's still, it's still a felony, and they're protecting him, and they're uh, prosecuting my colleagues who did nothing illegal. So I'm, I've lived it. I have lived it. I, I, I see the censorship. I, I want the left and the right to come together on this issue. I think it's possible for the left and the right to come together on on this issue of we should not support censorship. But I, I see these people, and this is what they say to me. They say, Alex, you shouldn't be investigating Acorn. You should not be investigating election fraud. You should not be doing because these are good things. You don't want to go after good organizations. And it's the it's the it's the moral statement that you shouldn't be doing something because you're investigating good people. And I it's like we're doing bad things stuff. because we're good. Did you see? I think they signed the law yesterday. Will you guys try to pull it up if you can? Where five non citizens at one time can run the polling places. They pass laws so non citizens can run the polling places and probably I vote over and over again in California. Did you see that? I didn't see that news item, no. I'll pull it up. It's it's so insane. I, I covered it yesterday. But uh, yeah, yeah, I know California, I think the headline was passes law where uh, immigrants can run polling places. It really is crazy. I want to play you this Hastings clip. This is him about a week sure. before he died with the Young Turks, and I've checked it. Shink Iger, or whatever his name is, uh, uh, Unger. That, that's how, right. how do you say name, it? Yes. Unger. Now, he's name. been on the show before. Yeah. I think he's a funny guy. Uh, but uh, the uh, whole, I wasn't missing his name, but on purpose is my point, folks. I'm babbling here. Uh, but, you know, I don't think he's come out and said it should be investigated. He broke down and cried for his friend, but won't dare say it's suspicious because, oh, the government never does anything wrong. Let's play this clip. Here it is. The Obama administration has clearly declared war on, on the press. It's declared war on uh, investigative journalists, our sources. I think the only recourse to this kind of behavior by the government is to say back to the government, we declare war on you, and from this point forward, we should no longer, as, as a media, as a whole, cooperate in any manner uh, with, with, with the government in terms of when we're doing national security stories. We should withdraw all, all our cooperation and we should publish everything we know because it's a free press and it's not a free except for when the government tells me to do it press. And we've been, we've been way too, way too easy going with these guys. We've let them get away with this for years. We've let them tell us what to print, what not to print. And I say, I say be done with it and everybody should just get together and, and, and fire back because no one else is going to defend the press. All right, and that's Sink Unger. I can hardly pronounce my own name, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, I mean, Sink. In fact, I want to get him on the show again. Last time I couldn't go on his show, so maybe he's mad at me. But try to get him on the show. He's always asked short notice. I mean, where are you? Where is current TV, I guess, owned by Al Jazeera, uh, on this very suspicious death of this journalist? Uh, again, what do you think of what Hastings just said from the grave? Well, I think I think Hastings writing, he, he, like I said to you before, he was having an awakening. You have to go through a lot of cognitive dissonance to do that. I also think that Hastings was was disillusioned by what he saw as his press corps, uh, like Newsweek, which he worked for before, was his hand was tied. They were not allowing him to print the stuff he wanted to print. He said he had to go out into the wilderness, as he put it, and go completely independent. And you know, he talked about a war. You know, I confronted the U.S. attorney who prosecuted me the other day, and this guy screamed and he lost control of himself. He 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 called the sheriff. He wanted to put me in jail. They just they're, they're drunk with power. They're drunk with power, and they want to use that power to shut people down. And and we have to stand together. I mean, we have to do we exactly. To, Is that the video that's coming out next week? Yeah, yeah. He this guy. It's all on tape. He, he lost. This is a, a former United States attorney who uh, who resigned for for corruption uh, related in, uh, issues in Louisiana. And I confronted him with my book. I said, "Sir, wh why did you do what you did?" I just asked him a simple question. I was very kind. I was very nice. 
I said, yeah, here's a copy of my book. I'd like to, you to see it, and I want you to give you a, 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 I want to give you a chance to respond to what you've done. You took three years of my life from me. Your, your leadership team engaged in corrupt activities. We have reason to believe you're leaking my emails. Why did you do it? And he lost control of it. Can't wait to see that. Well, listen, I went and walked around on July 4th in downtown Austin on the hike and bike trail, and I was shooting short little videos over the pedestrian walk bridge. And later I noticed the, the man and woman that confronted me were like 30 plus feet away, couldn't even hear me. I was being low voiced, you know, just saying, and here you have this in the public, blah, blah, blah. So I turned my camera off, go back to walking and then jogging because I was jogging and walking and, 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 and talking to people and doing reports. And the woman goes, shut up with your brainwashing. She looked like she was about a 45 year old uh, Hispanic woman. And, she, and it looked like she was with her husband, who was like a white guy. Uh, look like like a government bureaucrat type, and I said, "Excuse me." She said, "You know, shut up with your brainwashing." And and you're and I was like, "Well, what am I brainwashing?" And she and her husband goes, "Get out of here, buddy." And I went, "Wait a minute, I'm just walking by. You just said that to me." And later I saw in the video, earlier video, you know, they were down looking at me, couldn't even hear me, but knew who I was. And he goes, "Get out of here." And I went, "Hey, you I bet your wife can't, you know, back up why I'm a brainwasher, ma'am. Tell me why I'm a brainwasher." And I wasn't even taping. I wasn't being confrontational. He gets up and he goes, I told you, get out of here. And yeah. I said, and I said, well, uh, actually, I was going to keep going, but now I'm going to just stand here. And I stood and put my hands on the railing, looking over the bridge. I said, I'm not going to let you tell me what to do. But I'm telling you, because uh, she was wearing like a Democratic Party hat. That's how I know. These were Obama people. And I'm telling you, conservatives, if they hear you saying something they don't agree with, they might say something, but then they're going to debate you. And when I run into these Democrats... They will tell me, shut up. They think I need to shut up. And now you see the persecution of the press by Obama. It shows these are authoritarian creeps. Yes, I, I think, and, and now people are, I think people are starting to begin to see, they're starting to begin to see how bad it is. And, and that's what, that's the fight that I've had to fight out for the last couple of years of my life, just to get people to agree on the fundamental idea that there shouldn't be the censorship of the press. And what's, what's shocking to me is the fourth estate want censorship of the, the free press. They don't like, I, we call it cinema verite, the full raw video. They don't want you to see the full raw tape because they want they want to package stories for you and shove those narratives down your throat. I, I, want, I just want people to have all the information. I, I trust the American people. If they have the information, they can make the best decision for themselves. If you walked into my housing assistance private business and said, I want to run underage whores into America, I would say, oh, wait right here. I'd walk in my office and call the police. Well, I got sued for privacy on that because I, I, I filmed me of Acorn employees, and some of them sued me for not being allowed to take them. The conversation became not what we exposed, but the tactics we used to expose it. That's what they're doing with Edward Snowden. They're making the conversation about him and not what the information is actually exposed. This is the diversion. This is the obfuscation that the Fourth Estate uses, and... You, know, you need to learn how to how to break through that. Well, people need to support you. You've been through hell, but come to the other side and are the model of perseverance. George Washington, for almost eight years, fought against tyranny, lost almost every battle, but persevered and defeated the greatest empire in the world. No one had defeated. We'll defeat the New World Order with perseverance in the Info War. Get breakthrough at InfoWar store today. because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is, is an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, 
everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the new world order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. Folks, one year of funding and a stimulus bill for ACORN was $5 billion. $5 billion. That's even big to the globalist. And that's what Project Veritas shot down. We've been putting their website uh, up on television for people to put it back up there and I'll give it verbally to all the radio listeners. But pray for James O'Keefe and the rest of his team. Pray for us as well. Because let me tell you, they're killing a lot of journalists. They're setting people up. They've been coming after this guy. They've been you know, uh, raiding him. You name it. Uh, if people don't buy his book, if people don't support him and what they're going through, talking to him off air, struggling financially, this guy shouldn't be struggling financially, breaking the, some of the biggest stories the last decade. He should be rolling in war bonds. When you buy stuff at InfoWarsStore.com, we also carry the best products, the best seeds, the best water filters, the best magazines, books, videos. When you do that, we are in a war. That's what he says in the book. It is, folks. This is a war. I mean, James, let me tell you, if anybody, and I'm not trying to creep you out, if they're going to kill anybody, and I know you're so out in the open, that's why they have it, but let me tell you, these are gangsters. Um, I know people bring that up to you. Let me ask you the question. Are you worried about a hit team? And do you want to say on air you'll never commit suicide, or if your car blows up, you want an investigation? <laughs> no, I no, I'll never, I'll never commit suicide. I mean, I, I, I believe, I believe very strongly in, in the power of what we do, and 
and I, I believe it's the way that we can change things. And, and you know, I, I, I believe that, uh, you know, that, that what I'm doing is right and important, and it's going to be the way that we're going to reclaim our power as citizens. And now, I, I don't worry about the hit team because I'm a Christian, and I, I believe in, in um, you know, in, in, in I try to, to emulate the, the, the notion of giving up your life for something greater than yourself. That's something I try to, to live up to. Did you and find when you mentally, that. did you mentally pass a line when you're all over international news and, and you're getting threats and they're indicting you and all this other stuff? Did you cross a line where you committed and went through fear or was the fear never there? Because I found as soon as I went through the, 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 almost the selfishness of let me have a long, good life, that I, the world opened up to me. Like I got smarter as soon as I manned up. Um, you know, I, I, I have been afraid at times. I, I usually am afraid of things that most people don't realize. Like when you're sitting in a federal jail cell and, you know, a judge destroys your evidence. Yeah, you're scared to death. I mean, it's, it's the biggest perversion of justice ever. You have no defense. You have no defense. No last line of defense when a judge destroys your videotape. I mean, that happened to me. It's a matter of public record. You can look it up. And, and I, I'm very, I was very afraid. But, but the good news is there are so many people out there who support you. And they send you letters, and they send you emails, and, and that's what keeps you going at these events when, I, when, I, when people Unbelievable. You know, thank me, and that, that's really what keeps me going. Unbelievable. Folks, I mean, I've lived some of what this guy's lived through, uh, and they've really come after him. I mean, let me tell you something, folks. If I ever shot down a $5 billion operation, they'd probably kill me. I mean, I'm not trying to bring this up. I know a lot of people they've killed. And that's why I admire people like James O'Keefe and the rest of your team. Here at the end of this hour, let's rec the book recognizes them. Let's recognize some of the other people at the, the uh, uh, project that you're running, the Veritas Project, and let's have everybody pray for them as well once the show ends today. Recognize yeah. some of those folks. Yeah, people like Lila Rose, Hannah Giles, Sean Adelaide, uh, my, my friend who posed as, uh, as the member of the Muslim Fundamentalist Muslim Brotherhood, Simon Templar, my colleagues at the, who did the voter fraud work, John Buckley, Sean Murphy, some of these guerrilla intrepid journalists who, who've been in the shadows and who haven't come out because you know, they just, the guy, one of my friends, uh, Spencer, had his home uh, almost raided by, by the Department of Justice. The guy in the, by the way, I can't make this up, just to, not to make a lighthearted comment, but the guy in the New Hampshire Department of Justice who raided the home of my colleague for exposing voter fraud, his name was Richard Head, like Dick Head. This is the guy's actual name <laughs> in the state of New Hampshire. So, and he, and I can find Richard Head, it's on YouTube, it's got like 50,000 oh. views. I can't make this stuff up, Alex. It's, it's really more of like a... Hold on, let me do... I, I know you got to go to another interview. Let, let's do five more minutes overdrive so you can finish up. Folks, pray. Let's all pray during this break for Project Veritas. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro-Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June... What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the Info War. Uh, James O'Keefe's our guest. He's coming to Texas next week for an interview. Who knows? We might go up wherever he's at. Uh, do you not know where it is in Texas yet, James? Honestly, I'm, I'm, there's so many interviews next week. I have to figure out where it is. I understand. Theprojectveritas.org, is that the best main site to visit? Uh, it's easier. Just go to projectveritas.com. They all direct to the same place, projectveritas.com. You can make a donation or buy our book there as well. But theprojectveritas.org goes to the same place. Yep. Okay, yeah, fantastic. Well, want to make sure I'm putting the right one out. Uh, fantastic uh, breakthrough. Uh, our guerrilla war to expose fraud and save democracy. Uh, in the last three minutes, we've gotten this short segment. Other points you'd like to add? Well, I think, I think um, you know, there's rules. There's lessons in this book, Breakthrough. There's 39 Veritas rules, as I call them, shortcuts for the would-be entrepreneurial citizen reporter. Um, and I think you should use the power of video. I think it's the most effective medium. Uh, I think that the only way we have to reclaim our power from our from our elected representatives, and people say, James, why didn't you call this book Save the Republic? And we are a constitutional republic. I acknowledge that. 
But really what this is about is bringing power back to the people through information, through sunlight. They are extraordinary mechanisms built in to prevent us from reclaiming that power. And the only remaining way, I don't think it's even through voting anymore, I think the only remaining way we can reclaim our power as citizens in this democratic republic is through exposing the fraud. When you expose the fraud, you bring the left and the right together. You, 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 there's the false dichotomy breaks down, and people realize just how broken this system is. And you don't take my word for it. You can look at the results of our work. Six states changed their laws. People resigned just two weeks ago. We released an investigation into the federally subsidized Lifeline program where they're giving out free phones. Those phones were sold for drugs. They fired the workers. They're retraining the whole program. We get results. We get actual results, and we get the federal government to respond to us. Who, who inspired you uh, as a journalist? Well, we had a lot of, in, a lot of inspirations. One of them might, might shock you, actually. Um, I read Saul Linsky, and uh, you know, let me be clear, I'm not you know, endorsing everything that Saul Linsky said. But I read him, and I understood kind of where they're coming from. And I understood what the tactics they use and how they make their adversaries live up to their own principles. They expose hypocrisy. So I was inspired to expose hypocrisy on my college campus, being around professors, and they were telling me, you can't say this, you can't say that. It's, a, it's offensive to say things, and, it's, and, and they were expelling people. For and really, they're just authoritarian scumbag bullies. Right, but I, but I used that against them. I created a video. I, I said I was going to ban Lucky Charms, the breakfast cereal, and the grounds was racist against Irish people, <laughs> myself being an Irish American. And they took it seriously. They said they were going to remove Lucky Charms. So I threw it right back in their face using their own Orwellian kind of silencing tactics, and it worked. Yeah, that's like saying, let's get rid of Santa Claus. It's mean to Dutch people. Or let's get rid of uh, saying the Redskins. That's like honorable warriors. Uh, you know, it's like an honor. Uh, you know, to, it's like the Vikings. It's making fun of Norse people. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They were, they were cho uh, forced to choose between being ridiculous or being, or, you know, or, or being hypocrite. So it's, it's really a beautiful thing because we put people in situations just, or like the recent video we did where, with the guns that you talked about, where we, we asked people to put a sign on the lawn saying this home is probably gun free. How do they do it? Which is ridiculous. Or they're hypocrites. They don't. Do Absolutely. It. You're exposing yeah. Obama says Africa can't have air conditioning, like, you know, $100 million plus per trip. Let me say bye to you during this break. I'm going to come back live with more news and breaking info. Get breakthrough at InfoWarsStore.com or call 888 253 3139. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.